Yeah. Sorry, did you, you have three questions? I have two other okay. my original questions. Was one, um, what if you, people, I, people have asked me to join them in different capacities and I've never responded because I felt uneasy. What if, um, if, if you're listed as somebody's friend or somebody's associate <coughs> or whatever, mm -hmm. and they do something uncomfortable, well, it's like a little bit like your Pakistan thing. What if you don't want to subscribe to everything they represent? Doesn't yeah, you can tune them down. There, by the way, this might all change with the new version <laughs> that I've not seen yet. But you can tune down what you hear also. So, for example, you have a friend who only posts about cooking and what, what she's eating. Uh, then what you can do is say less stories by her or fewer stories by her, more stories by her. So you can control... Uh, control that. But by the way, I just want to tell you that some people find, uh, are using Facebook as a kind of dieting tool, if you can believe it. What they do is they post everything they eat and then have friends comment and give them feedback as they're eating. There are also people who quit cigarettes the same way, where they say, I just smoked a cigarette, and then their friends will walk them through, you know, well, hold, hang in there, it's good, it's been four hours since you had a cigarette, etc. So, how much community you build around you is really up to you. And I would suggest starting slow and moving on. Okay, we've got to go okay, move on. Gotta, yeah. Two things. We have an MVCC page. Join that, you'll find a lot of people on there who have contacts yeah. that you'll be, be really interested in. But the other thing that you mentioned earlier that we should all think about as critics is you talked about the branded identity and building the platform. And building your own page for your identity, whether it's as a freelance critic, I have a particular brand that I've represented over several different companies, and I have a page for that. Okay. And it has a lot of fans. It's been a really good way to build my platform. That's a terrific way to use Facebook. There's also a new social media network just for writers, authors, critics, called redroom.com. Do you all know about it? <laughs> um, just, I, I don't, I'm not associated with them, but you know, it comes from it. Michelle. What we're seeing is that there are industries where specific news groups or, I'm sorry, um, social networks are, are, are growing and you might find that one works for you and you should certainly uh, look into that. I would also <coughs> just want to amplify what she said about friend versus a fan page. So you can have a personal page, but if you're a writer or you're an author, you can also have a separate, <coughs> what they call a page versus a profile. And then on a page, people don't friend you, they fan you. Become, they become a fan of your work. So it's a little too complicated for most people, but that's something to think about. If you don't want to do anything personal, but highlight your work, you can go and find the pages section of Facebook and create a page rather than a profile. Yes, you've been waiting, yes. I'm sorry, I, I just want to say the one thing we haven't talked about is events mm -hmm. and the okay. usefulness of events on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook has an events section that you can create events, you can add events, people can RSVP. I know a lot of people who used to use Evite for things like that don't use it anymore because Facebook is doing that. So this is what I was saying earlier, Facebook is trying to compete with the internet and do, do uh, various things. One last question, then we move on. Is there uh, like a cheat sheet for people who want to figure out what, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I, I actually, I detest Facebook and, and every, just every everything about it, I just hate it. Okay. Um, That's and I'm here to try to get over some of my... <laughs> Okay, so when you go to my page here, it says tips for journalists. I don't know if you can see from where you're sitting, but that's what I would do. I would go to my site at 3tips.com, and you click on, you go to 10 things to try today, and then you'll come down to tips for journalists, and you will read step by step what works, what doesn't, gives you some ideas. What I'm trying to find out is, like, I get all these friend requests from people who just are in, are in their address book. I have mm -hmm. no interest in having anything to do with You just ignore them. Friend, like acknowledge, and then it says ignore. And I just don't do anything. That's so, fine. But what my question is this: If I put ignore, do they then get an email that no. says Elizabeth no. Being no. no, no, they didn't. They won't. That's but they will run into you if you run. Suppose she tries to friend her, and then they meet once a year, and she says, "Hey, I sent you a a, 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 a Facebook thing, and you didn't uh, respond." So, what Facebook? Oh God, I hate it. I, you know, I don't really like it. There are too many people on there. Well, it turns out she loves Facebook. She's completely addicted. But she won't know that she, how much of a Facebooker she is, how many friends she has, unless she hears from other people. Most of the people that you will ignore won't follow up and don't care. They're just trying to build friends right, and things like exactly that. That's exactly my point. You know, right. The but other thing about that is if you unfriend somebody, they don't get an email that they've been unfriended. No, I don't believe any of that. No, I'm not. <laughs> 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 is there a 
the cheat sheet where you know where you're talking about these things like privacy, right? So laws. like here's a little cheat sheet that says to find to, to find out about privacy, go here. To find out about you know unfriending, go here. To find out this. Go yes, here. yes. So yeah, yeah. the the answer to that is on Facebook itself. Their help section is terrific. I don't know if you've spent even a second there. But I would go there, all these questions they can answer, they have detailed descriptions of how all these things work. So I would check out the help section of those sites. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. You know, in regard to what you said about how this is proliferating, I got uh, an email from, or Facebook uh, from uh, Michael Moore asking me to be his friend, and then I saw that he has 18,000 friends. <laughs> right. So that's but, the way he does yeah. it. No, no, but that, that's the way he does it. I mean, it's, you didn't know before when he would send you an email if he was sending it to 1,000 people or 10,000, but now you, you get to see that in a way that you didn't before. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, I, wanna, I wanna spend a, a few minutes talking about Twitter. And I will, the first thing I'll say is, if you're uncomfortable with Facebook, then Twitter is not for you. Because <laughs> face, uh, Twitter is for people who think Facebook is 19th century. Okay? <laughs> and it's really the next level. Don't even worry about, see what happens is there are all these buzzwords and things, people are talking about it. Uh, you're here because you're keeping an open mind or you were forced to be here because this was before the panel you really wanted to attend. But by keeping an open mind, you are able to kind of think about these things. But you don't have to jump right in and join Facebook. I mean, Facebook has been around for four and a half years. Right? Twitter's been around for two or three years. So there comes a point when all your friends are using something and you've, you'll find a utility in it and a value that you'll join. It's, there's no rush. But Twitter, just like Facebook, is something you should understand, not necessarily jump in and Twitter everything. So what is Twitter? Twitter is the Facebook status update where what are you doing right now on steroids, right? So what she was saying, I'm having rice and beans, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, or I'm reading this, which is really helpful, as she said. Those things are the way that Twitter works. But Twitter is also as annoying as you let it be. Okay, <laughs> depends on who your friends are, who are you following. So we're gonna go through a quick tutorial on this. But what I found with Facebook, uh, sorry, with Twitter is that uh, people are constantly writing on there and there's some people who you learn so much from. And there's some people who waste your time. It's sort of like your real friends. Think about your actual friends and family. They're people you learn a lot from, people you like hanging around because they're fun, and then there are people that completely waste your time, but you tolerate them because you've known them or you're related to them, right? That's exactly the way it is on Twitter. It's also, if you really think about it, the same way on email. There are people who you're on those joke lists from friends who forward you crap, right? But then there are other people who forward you good stuff. Keep that in mind. Instead of saying, this will never work, think about it that way. So let me give you a couple of examples. So what I, uh, what I do on, so you go to a Twitter page. So my Twitter page is, uh, Twitter.com slash Srinet. So you, that's how you tell the ID of somebody is by looking at this. So if you do Srinet, if you go to this page, then what it says is, I'm following 188 people. That means their tweets, as they call it, arrive in my Twitter inbox. 1,700 people are following me. That means every time I post something, they're getting it. These are all voluntary. I don't force anybody to do this. Okay? <laughs> and I've done 763 updates over the course of the year. Okay? What I have found is Twitter and Facebook are unbelievable promotional tools. If you've written an article and it's appeared in a magazine or newspaper, you'll have a readership. But you have to actively help energize and kind of inject the social media aspects into it so that more people will see it. If you don't take control of that process, you will not be as successful in building your platform and getting the most important new currency of our time, which is eyeballs, right? The eyeballs will not come, there was a time when your work spoke for itself. It does not anymore, even in the New York Times, even in the New York Times book review, if you have a book review piece in the New York Times, there was a time when you knew every friend of yours would have read it. I, that is not true anymore. I run into people whose work, and I subscribe to, the news, uh, to this, and they say that not everybody sees it. How do they see it? By injecting it into what they call the blogosphere or the statusphere is what another term for this, or Twitter or Facebook. So you have to do that. If you've got an article, you've got to get it out there in front of a lot of people, and this is a way to do it. But the other thing you can do with Facebook, uh, with, uh, with Twitter and with Facebook, is just listen. 
You don't have to talk back. You don't have to Twitter everything you're doing. You can just listen. My wife works for Pfizer. And what she's found is it's an incredibly useful tool to listen to new ideas about medicine, about healthcare, about business and medicine better than she's seen in anything else. Okay? But she doesn't Twitter unnecessarily. So you can decide just to listen. If you're a writer, you're a thinker, you're a commissioner.